thank you so much for joining us. Can you tell me um, what uh, what is your advice to academics and global health practitioners? Uh, how can they best um, influence policy in Canada? And what is your sort of advice to them on bridging the sort of research to policy implementation gap? Well, I'd first say to engage with policymakers, right? Because there's so many researchers doing great work, and you know, even when I was doing research or when I was a student, I thought, how is this not out there? The fact is, a lot of policymakers just don't know about it because there's a, you know, a, such a plethora of information out there. So I would say, if you want to bridge that policy gap, you need to engage with policymakers, and that means that you need to uh, work with government officials, right? Get to know them, get to know what the priorities of the government are, get to know what the issues that the government is dealing with, and talk to politicians as well, right? And start building those networks so that you can start to bridge some of those silos that we operate in. And I would say the other Another really important thing is uh, figuring out what the issues are on the ground, right? Because um, you know, if we're going to translate research into policy, it needs to fit with what the issues of the day are and what the needs of the people and of the communities that we're trying to serve are. So it's really about having those conversations, networking, building relationships, and having that sharing of knowledge between the policy side and the research side. And you mentioned so networking and getting to know them. Outside of that, are there any other like channels that you use? Like, do you use Twitter? What are the best ways to kind of reach you? Do you like getting emails? Are there particular newspapers you read? Uh, I mean, you can read. You can reach me through uh, so many different channels. I am on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I check them all myself. Uh, email, letters. You could send me a letter. You could call a politician to ask to have a meeting. I think one thing that um, Canadians don't understand that much or don't know is that politicians are very accessible, mm -hmm. right? Our job is to serve the public. So mm -hmm. sometimes if you call up our office, we will make time to meet with you because that's our job is to understand what's important for our communities, what's important for our stakeholders, and to have those conversations and then to think about how we can make policy and support our policymakers to do the best actions for people in our community. Thank you. Um, so you, you just touched on, on my next question, which was get to know the government's priorities and get to know sort of what, what um, Canada is looking for. Can you tell us a bit more about what your priorities are in global health and particularly in research? So in, in global health more broadly, I mean, as you know, Canada made a very big commitment to the Muskoka Initiative in 2010 in maternal, newborn, and child health. Um, one of the things that we were elected on was to expand uh, what maternal, newborn, and child health looks like to make sure that we're including the full range of reproductive and sexual health uh, services. Um, but in addition to that, I mean, we also have strong commitments to a wide variety of issues in global health. We know it's not limited to one specific issue. It's about building stronger health systems, uh, which we do through different partners, whether it's the Pan American Health Organization, the World Health Organization, working with priorities in our, car in our partner countries to make sure that we're addressing the gaps that they have in their health policy, working with global partners like the Global Fund to fight AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria, working towards polio eradication, working with Gavi, and a whole number of partners to make sure that we're addressing the full range of health issues because we know that there's no silver belt bullet when it comes to health, right? The other thing that's really important in terms of the research is that, you know, Canada's not setting the agenda in terms of global health research, right? We need to work with our partners um, throughout the world to make sure that we are identifying and supporting local research in country and making sure that you know we're supporting their priorities supporting capacity building for local researchers and then doing what we can to support them maybe one great model that we have is IDRC right that works you know uh, that twins with researchers in the global south to support their research and really address uh, some of the global health challenges that they face and I think that's part of what you know makes uh, you know the Canadian model fairly successful and it's important because you know when we're talking about global health it's not just about our priorities it's, it's the whole world.